Welcome to the last chapter of this course. Now it's time to make use of key constraints. Here's your current database model. The three entity types, professors, organizations and universities all have primary keys. But affiliations doesn't, for a specific reason that will be revealed in this chapter. Next up, you'll model a so-called relationship type between professors and universities. As you know, in your database, each professor works for a university. In the ER diagram, this is drawn with a rhombus. The small numbers specify the cardinality of the relationship. A professor works for at most one university, while a university can have any number of professors working for it, even zero. Such relationships are implemented with foreign keys. Foreign keys are designated columns that point to a primary key of another table. There are some restrictions for foreign keys. First, the domain and the data type must be the same as the one of the primary key. Secondly, only foreign key values are allowed that exist as values in the primary key of the reference table. This is the actual foreign key constraint, also called referential integrity. You'll dig into referential integrity at the end of this chapter. Lastly, a foreign key is not necessarily an actual key, because duplicates and null values are allowed. Let's have a look at your database. As you can see, the column university short name of professors has the same domain as the ID column of the university's table. If you go through each record of professors, you can always find the respective ID in the university's table. So both criteria for a foreign key in the table professors referencing universities are fulfilled. Also, you see that university short name is not really a key because there are duplicates. For example, the ID EPF and UBE occurred three times each. When you create a new table, you can specify a foreign key similarly to a primary key. Let's look at two example tables. First, we create a manufacturer's table with a primary key called name. Then we create a table cars that also has a primary key called model. As each car is produced by a certain manufacturer, it makes sense to also add a foreign key to this table. We do that by writing the references keyword, followed by the reference table and its primary key in brackets. From now on, only cars with valid and existing manufacturers may be entered into that table. Trying to enter models with manufacturers that are not yet stored in the manufacturers tables won't be possible, thanks to the foreign key constraint. Again, the syntax for adding foreign keys to existing tables is the same as the one for adding primary keys and unique constraints. Okay, let's have a look at your database and implement a simple relationship between professors 